This is the Pixfra Arc LRF thermal monocular. Let's grab it out. This is a uh, exciting piece. These are extremely good value for money and on paper look like they're a really good option. So this is the unit here, pretty standard looking sort of monocular uh, with your strap on, on one side, can go on either, but pretty comfortable in the hand. Four buttons across the top, everything pretty, uh, pretty stock standard with that one. Now we took this one out and had a bit of a look through it and you can see some of that footage now. And this one is a 384 sensor and it does look pretty good with a, a 12 micron Pixel pitch and also a, a sub 20 net D. Very impressive for sort of the dollars that these things sit at. Uh, it has a laser rangefinder built in as well. Let's have a look at what we get in the box. The thermal, of course, and the little carry bag here. Get a couple of batteries, like so. There's the strap for the carry bag and the cable as well. And I imagine in here is gonna be a charger. Now there's a neck strap for the unit and a charger also. Of course, another one, another packet with all your paperwork and manual and things on those lines. So pop one of these in and we'll have a little look. So you'll have your standard white hot and your black hot. Then we get an iron red, which is more of a, a red highlights. I don't mind the iron red, it looks quite good. We get onto alarm. Now alarm is what others would call red hot. And that's where you've got a, a, a white hot basis with red on the really warm points as well. Then we get into the green hot uh, and the sepia tone as well, which is unique. It's different to, uh, to many others. So for the zoom on this, it'll show up as one time zoom, two times, four times, and eight times. But the base level zoom on this one is 2.76. So on two times, it's gonna be at 5.52. At four times, it's gonna be at 11.04. And at eight times, it's gonna be at 22.08. Now you see a number of manufacturers are moving across to actually representing that as a true number rather than a multiplier. These ones still have it as a multiplier. So these have a hot point mode, which will sort of like the alarm, which will bring up the red for the warmer parts or whatever you're looking at. Hot point's a little different where it will identify the single warmest point in, in your vision. So it is quite useful if you are scanning a field and trying to look for animals. So it'll, it'll pop up that little X wherever it is, but it won't show you multiple ones. So it'll, it'll choose whichever one is the warmer. So if you've got a field and you've got a couple of foxes in there, Generally, it's going to show the closest one because that's the, the one that will appear the warmest. Could be a useful feature. It is quite a large X, so it can actually cover up what you are looking at, but that is a option that you can turn on and off as you wish. This one has the mode that we see on a lot of these devices and different companies call them different names. This one calls it Forest. It changes the number of the settings of how the image looks and it's designed to really sort of up the contrast and give you uh, much more definition around things that are glowing compared to the background. I do find it's very personal preference as to whether you would use it or not. So looking at the unit, this is the A25P, which is the 25mm objective and the 384 sensor. There is also a 19 and 35mm objective versions of this, uh, as well as a 640 version, which will have a 35 and a 50mm options. There is also a non-laser range finding option in the ARC series as well. At the front here, we have the focus for whatever is downrange. That's that. Below that is laser rangefinder. It's actually covered up. A number of them show these exposed with the two different lenses. This one is all covered up. I don't know if that's going to affect performance. In our use of it, it was comfortably going out to 500 plus and was working all the way up to that very comfortably. We got a lens cap that sort of clicks in there. There's the hand strap on here. It also has mounting points on the other side. So if you do want to put your hand on the other side, you can do that reasonably easily as well. On this side though, is the USB-C port, which is that one there. And that is for using for transferring data, for charging the unit as well. Got a quarter inch stud on the bottom. So if you are going to remote mount it, it is possible to do that. Have a nice texture grip down the back here where your thumb would wrap around it. On the back, the eye cup is transferable to either side. You can twist it around so it's left or right, depending on your preference. And of course, you got your focus for your screen back here as well. Your battery compartment is a twist and pull out with your batteries in there. There is an indicator as to where you should push down and twist it around to also. And that battery cap is secured by a little strap there, so you won't lose that one easily. There's four buttons on the top. We've got power at the top. Next is the LRF button, as well as doing recording. 
One behind that will change your color palette or get you in a basic menu for some of the settings. And then you go into the deeper menu, uh, holding that one down. At the back here, you've got your zoom, which you can see steps you through your various zoom modes of 2X, uh, 1X, 2X, 4X, and 8X. As well, if you hold that one down, you actually trigger the shutter which I do like the fact that you can manually control that from a button. Hold that one down, it'll reset the shutter. A useful thing that a lot of thermals don't have that available as a button. They often have it as a menu item inside, which you then got to go into, which is less convenient. Now these are a magnesium body, so they are reasonably light. And across the range, the 384s are a 384 by 288 pixel sensor. The 640s are a 640 by 512. All of them are a 12 micron pixel pitch and all sub 20 net D on them. Obviously you may, your base magnification will range depending on which configuration you go with. So double check that to see which one is most suited for what you're doing. The image quality on these are really nice, especially for the price point. Definitely worth a consideration if you're not looking to spend the big dollars on them. Let's take you through the menu system. So you've got four buttons across the top. The first one at the front is the on off button. Uh, you tap that, you'll go to standby and hold it down, it will turn off. Next one is your LRF button. So if we press that, your laser rangefinder will come up and depending on what setting we have set to, it will do its thing. If you hold that one down, it will start to record like such. If we press the next button down, that's gonna change our various uh, color palettes. Like so, we ran through those ones before. Uh, for the various types. If we hold that one down, that will take us into our menu system. So let's do that. Uh, so we end up with our brightness, image brightness, contrast and sharpness, and, and then onto the other features. So Wi-Fi, we can turn on or off if we want to connect to the app. We have our hot point, that's the hot point tracking where you get the little red X that will go onto the hottest part. Go down from that and we are into the forest setting, which changes all the uh, sort of the, the image uh, into one that some people do like, depending on the circumstance you're in. If we go to the next one, we can turn on the LRF mode. We can put it into single or continuous, and that will uh, either run, when you press it, it'll give you a measurement or it'll continue to give you a measurement the whole time. We also can change the language. Go into the function set. So we have the burning warning. So if the temperature is looking at it's too hot, it will give us a heads up before it burns the sensor. We've got the option to have the logo on and off. We can turn all the status on or off. So if we want a completely clear screen, we can choose that to be off. We have the auto FFC. This is where it will do the refresh automatically, or you can set it up to do the refresh um, manually as well. You can always override it with a manual refresh. And then we get down to the dead pixel correction, where if you end up with a pixel that's not responding correctly, it'll go through a process to recover that. And down the bottom here, it'll turn the mic on or off when you are recording a video. So hold the menu button down, we can get out of that, and we can go into the system settings, basic stuff here. You can get it to auto standby after a given period of time. Very, very useful to conserve battery life. You have an auto shutdown again after a certain period of time. You've got your USB mode, where you can configure how it interacts when it's plugged into something. Uh, your unit set, the yards and meters. So you can set up how it is displayed for the date and time, and you can actually set up your date and time itself. Then you've got your version information about firmware, and then we can restore everything to default. And if we come out of the menu, and the bottom button here, if you press that down, that will adjust your zoom. You can see it going through one, two, and four, and eight X. And if we hold that one down, that will engage the shutter to refresh it as well. And that is it. We hold down the on button and you get into a shutdown mode and we're off. That is the Pix for Arc LRF model, this one particularly. This is the A25P. Hopefully that's been helpful, guys. We'll be back with more videos soon.